Hi everybody and welcome back. Uh, I know it's been a long time since the last video because of the holidays and all that sort of thing getting in the way, but we're back now and it's time to do some more painting. Um, I've been really trying hard to think about some ways I can do some user requests because we've been starting to have a few, which I'm really happy to see, so please keep sending those in. I really like getting them from you. Um, and one that I was hearing was that people wanted to see how to paint white stuff. Uh, we talked about how to paint black in an earlier video and people have similar concerns about white so I thought that would be another good video to do. Unfortunately, I looked through the figure collection that I have now and I didn't see really all that many great figures that really, really were great for demonstrating white. I mean, it had lots and lots of white on them. Just There just wasn't the figures there that I wanted. So um, I'm kind of deciding to compromise here. Um, and I am going to be doing this guy today. This guy is a standard uh, sort of British 18th century red coat. So he's really great for the American Revolution and it's a nice generic figure uh, that gets used in a lot of conflicts from that period and it's just useful to know how to paint him. Um, this one is by Perry. It's from their um, plastics box that was released just last year. Um, really nice, cheap way to get a lot of this unit really well sculpted. Um, anyway, yeah, as I said, white. I really wanted to do something that was like all white, but I just couldn't find any figures for it right now. So I thought this would be a, a good compromise because um, 18th century uniforms like this actually often include quite a bit of white. They're not all white, but you know, there's white pants or white waistcoat, uh, lots of straps are white. So you get a good bed of white in a figure like this. So I thought this would probably come pretty close and it'll also be beneficial for people who just want to see how to paint a very popular and very frequently used unit from this period. And I will be returning definitely later on to white, hopefully, and trying to pick a figure then that's really, really white so we can really focus on it. But this should be, I hope, a good taste for the moment. And this guy's all ready to go now. He's been base coated in the usual gray enamel. I've put him together first, of course, because he's plastic, so you have to put him together. Um, he's been base coated, and I've painted the skin on him in the standard way that I usually paint skin. And if you want to know about that more look at some of my older tutorials. I've also done his hair. Um, it's white um, in this case but it could be any other color but since that's a quick thing I just wanted to get it out of the way first. So okay let's go ahead and get started on how to paint a uh, 18th century British red coat. Okay we're going to now start out by um, base coating all the white areas on our soldier using Arctic Gray Medium from Foundry and um, we're starting to use a slightly uh, lighter gray than you might normally expect. So usually if you have sort of a white triad, the shade color is darker than this. But I found working that way, it usually just means more work for, me, for you because you have to start out darker and you have to build up to lighter and it just takes a lot longer. So we're going to employ uh, another shortcut to get a, a nice white here because the name of the game when you're painting white stuff is subtle. You really don't want to have too strong of contrast or it's just going to look funny. Once you finish applying the base coat, um, it's time to put a wash all over all of these areas. And this is my little shortcut method for painting um, the white, um, given the fact that I don't want to apply lots of layers of shades of gray. So what I've done is I've mixed some um, um, Citadel Nuln oil and some Seraphim Sepia and I've watered that down so it's really thin. And I'm now applying that to all the areas, and that's going to add a shadow to white. Now, you need that seraphim sepia in there, because if you just use black by itself, the contrast against the white's going to be too stark and too harsh. You need that little extra brown in there that softens the color, so then when we go to highlight it, you're going to get a more realistic effect. Once the wash is dry, it's time to just start layering white all over the figure, and I've taken my white paint and thinned it down a fair amount. So what we're going to do here is rely on the natural transparency of white paint to sort of build up layers of color on the white areas of the figure. Well, okay, not color, but, um, you know, tone and value. So the entire figure is going to get coated all over with white at least once, thinly, and then we're going to start applying it to increasingly uh, selective areas of the figure to get areas that would get a lot of light or that we want to be especially bright, uh, well, more white for lack of a better word, and uh, creases where we had put that wash before we're going to leave those alone so that we 
still have some shadows. Um, as I mentioned earlier in the video, the real trick with painting white is subtle, 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 subtle. You do not want to have strong shadows when you're painting white. You do not want to have high contrast when you're painting white because it, well, it's just not going to look like white. It's going to look like something else. But the transitions on a white garment or anything else are very gradual. So it's really, really important that you start with this sort of um, very light base coat as we did. Make sure that we wash it very lightly and then very slowly and gradually apply these layers of white to build up brightness where we want it but still have these shadows. And the finished figure, you're not, this is not going to be high contrast what you're going to get here, but you're going to get an effect that is believable and does have some tonal differences. Once we've finished all the basic white areas, I'm also going to work on his mess bag, which I went ahead and painted the same way I painted all the white, other white areas. But really, this is something that's be sort of a canvas colored thing. It should be a little bit of a different color, sort of yellowish. So I found a quick tip for painting this quickly is just, as I said, paint it like you paint the rest of the white areas, but then take some boneyard shade and thin it down so it's sort of a wash. And then you're going to kind of apply that thinly over the entire bag. Um, to give it a yellowish cast and then highlight it again with white and that will give that a slight sort of yellowish tonal difference so it's different from the rest of the uniform. Now we're going to work on the red coat itself and I'm going to start out by base coating it using Vallejo Black Red which is a really great red undercoat because it's, it coats really well and it's a really deep rich color and everything you apply over the surface of it is going to get um, a really nice sort of high contrast effect. Um, and I'm just going to really get that everywhere. And then when I'm done, I'm going to go ahead and take um, the Foundry Scarlet shade color, the Scarlet Triad, and I'm going to paint that in all of the areas, except, of course, the deep re recesses. And I'm just going to blend the Scarlet out into those so you'll see really dark-looking shadows, basically, um, underneath the arms and places like that. And it's a good thing because with this figure you can't reach certain areas very well on here at all so that that's that's an important thing once that's on there i'm then going to take um the scarlet light and i'm going to apply that to all the higher areas a uh, scarlet light is a very very transparent color um it it doesn't coat very well at all by itself but it is wonderful for adding sort of a, a brilliance and richness to your colors and uh, with that really deep black-red base coat, it's going to create this really brilliant, rich, kind of high-contrast red um, for our jacket here. And that's not going to be quite sufficient because you're, you're not going to, it, it's not really going to, it doesn't work very well as a highlight color. It's mostly just to add, um, yeah, value and extra sort of body to the color. So we're going to, go back over that in a minute and pick it out a little bit more. So now I'm going to do just exactly what I said and apply um, some of that scarlet with some medium bone yarn mixed into it onto all of the areas of the jacket I want to highlight because the bone yarn takes all the transparency out of the uh, scarlet and lets me create a, a more stable highlight color so that I can get those um, you know definite areas of, high, of higher light onto the jacket. Now I'm going to paint the uh, facings on this coat, and um, I'm going to do this with a blue color, and I'm using the Foundry Dark Blue Triad. Uh, these could be actually a lot of colors, greens, um, yellows, it varied quite a bit. Blue actually would signify this to be a royal regiment, I, I believe. Um, so, but, you know, I actually just really like this color, which is why I'm doing it. I'm just going to apply um, all three colors, starting with the shade and th going through to the light. But you don't have to worry too much about defining specific areas of shadow and highlight because these areas are so tiny, you're really not even really going to see much of a difference here. Now I'm going to go ahead and paint some white sort of trim or braiding kind of around 
the buttonholes on the facing. And I'm not going to worry about shading this. I'm just going to go in with straight white because these areas are so small, it's not going to matter. And, and this is time consuming work. You know, you have to be careful. And you'll notice here I'm making some mistakes and having to go back over several times and, you know, use some blue sort of to clean up the edges later. So this is just really questions of patience and, you know, working slowly and being methodical. Um, and there's some uniforms that don't even have this white trim, this white lacing. Some of them, uh, it would just be the same color as the facing, and that would save you a lot of time. So you don't necessarily have to do this. It's just going to depend on the unit. And I'm even going to go so far as to even paint white, sort of also white braiding or lacing around the outside edges um, of the facing and around the collar. And that <laughs> makes it sort of an extra area or um, uh, level of difficulty. But once again, you don't have to do this. It's going to depend on the unit you're doing. And in some cases, you can get away with a much simpler um, design. Now I'm going to move on to all of the sort of black or gray layers of the figure, and I'm using um, foundry uh, charcoal black for this. Um, I'm going to be doing the shoes here, um, the cartridge case, his uh, water bottle, his hat, um, his ponytail wrap, um, you know, basically all those areas that would be uh, just a very dark color. Um, and basically, I'm going to paint everything with the darkest color, which is basically black, and then I'm going to mix some of the black with the charcoal gray medium, and I'm going to use that to highlight things like the um, um, like the shoes, um, the cartridge case, and the water bottle, basically everything, but it's kind of a subtle color because the medium charcoal gray is a little too light um, for that sort of medium highlight. And then I'm going to use the charcoal gray medium again, sort of as a highlight color. Um, on the water bottle and shoes and hat, um, but I'm not going to go any higher on the water bottle because I want that to be metal and I don't want it to be too brilliant. I'm then going to take um, the charcoal gray light and I'm going to take also some stone medium from the stone triad. I'm going to use that to add extra highlights to the uh, shoes and the ammo case because those are leather, black leather, and I want them to be a little bit shinier. Um, I'm so those are, those are going to, I'm going to put some extra pops on. Um, as for the hat, I'm not going to go as high contrast on that as I would with the shoes and ammo bag because it's sort of a fabric hat, it's sort of felt, and I don't want it to be really high contrast. So I'm probably not going to highlight it above sort of charcoal gray uh, light. Maybe a little bit of stone um, shade just sort of on the top edges and areas that would really get hit by light, basically. At this point, I'm going to paint his bedroll, and I'm just going to use the Foundry Stone Triad to do that. And I'm going to add an extra highlight layer with the um, Arctic Gray Medium. And you'll see me also just going back in here and sort of cleaning up those white straps on the backpack, because they, they got a little messy when I painted this gray blanket roll basically and they need to be smoothed over a little bit. Now I'm working on the brown areas of the figure which includes sort of the bayonet scabbard which I just base coated in bay brown from Foundry and I'm going to base coat the musket stock using that same bay brown color. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and highlight that using first um, chestnut shade from Foundry and then chestnut medium. And I'm going to do the same thing on the um, bayonet scabbard, even though I know that's like a really small area and I don't, technically it should be leather and you want it to be a little bit of a different shade than the wooden gun. It's such a, it really is such a small area, I don't think it makes a lot of difference here, so I'm just going to do the same. Um, and coincidentally, I've also gone back and done the um, strap on the musket, painted it white in the same way that I did the rest of the clothing because I had forgotten to do that earlier. Now it's time to finish up the metal areas. I already base coated them. I base coated the um, steel and silver areas using um, charcoal gray light and some natural steel from Vallejo, and the bronze areas using some bay brown and bronze from Vallejo. Now I'm highlighting them. I'm highlighting the um, 
bronze fittings, mostly on the gun and the water bottle, using some old gold. And I'm going to highlight the steel areas with just the Vallejo natural steel. That's basically the gun barrel, the, the um, bayonet, um, some fittings. Um, and I'm going to wash it lightly over the um, water bottle just so it's not too uh, dominant because I want that to look blackened. Um, as for the buttons, those are shinier and those are going to end up being highlighted with um, Vallejo silver. And you have to do that very carefully. Um, so as, you know, not to make a mess and still to leave a little of the darker color around the edge so that there's some contrast between that and the white. And that's our red coat about done. The only other thing I did was take some Citadel blue wash and put it onto the gun barrel and a bayonet to give a sort of blue steel look. Um, okay, so I hope you really enjoyed painting this figure. It's, it, it's a little bit more of a practical painting guy than some of my figures. It's a little less involved. I didn't get as fussy or go into such detail as I sometimes do, but hopefully that'll actually be more useful um, for more of you. And I also hope you got an idea about a way you can paint white, get nice uh, subtle white, and do it pretty quickly too, just with some shortcuts like the wash and, you know, actually a minimal number of colors it, this this way. I mean, it, it won't give you maybe the depth or complexity of layering lots of different shades of gray, but I think it's a, it's a pretty practical way of going about it if you have less time. So, you know, uh, I had fun doing this video, and once again, please, you know, like this. Um, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, leave me comments, as always. I want to know what you thought of this, if you liked it. If you didn't like it, you thought there was a dumb guy, the good guy. And also, you know, really what you want to see next. What, what should I tackle next? Um, and like I said, I will be returning to White later on and doing a more comprehensive tutorial for those who are missing it. So, once again, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.